Alas, the dashing and dapper James McAvoy, the shameless actor who was cast to win the beating heart of many a fair maiden. I play a man called Tom Lefroy, who later went on to become the Lord Chief Justice of Ireland, who in his early part of his life was a bit more normal and a bit more uh, as you would be as a young middle class man in that time. He sought a bit of adventure and, and was charming and open and charismatic and, and uh, maybe a little bit forward. A very dangerous young man, one who has no doubt infected the hearts of many a young, young woman with the soft corruption. Read this. Hmm. And you will understand. His relationship with her was unrepresentative of, of the way that Jane would act. I mean, she had to be scolded by her sisters a few times because her behaviour was so forward and so uh, openly flirtatious um, with him uh, in public occasions. And um, he really, it seems like he brought her out of her shell a little bit or taught her something or released something in her that, that until then hadn't been seen by her family or friends and not in her writing. She is one of our finest writers who wrote about sexy things and funny things and relationshipy things and matters of the heart and yet we, we think she might never have actually experienced the physical act of love, you know. And so I think it's interesting that just at this moment when she starts to get really active and she writes Pride and Prejudice and starts uh, her first version of Northanger Abbey and she's, uh, she starts redoing Sense and Sensibility, it's all at the same time as she met Tom Lefroy. Lefroy! Yes! Arguably the hottest young British acting talent around, James McAvoy. And playing Jane Austen herself is the rising star of The Princess Diaries and The Devil Wears Prada, Anne Hathaway. When a young woman such as yourself receives the addresses from a gentleman such as my nephew, it is her duty to accept at once. But what do we find? Independent thought? Exactly. She's at a moment in her life where she's, she's already been writing, but you get the feeling that she's a little bit unfocused that um, it's something she wants to do that she knows she's good at, but she's not necessarily making that final leap and saying, no, this is how I define myself. This is something I define myself by. And you see her make that decision during the course of the film, and you see what leads her to make that decision. But I definitely think when you meet her, she's not the Jane Austen that we kind of know and study and we study her work. When Tom LaFore comes into her life, uh, he's someone that matches her. He's someone for her to play with. And I think she really doesn't necessarily recognize that in the beginning, doesn't really see him as that. She just sees him as a really annoying person. Um, but then eventually he gets under her skin and they realize that uh, they mean more to each other. If you were asked to dance, that was kind of one of the only times that you could talk without being overheard. And if a turn on the dance floor took 10 minutes, they would be free to have a 10 minute conversation. In a way, it was one of the only opportunities you had to find out if this person that you maybe want to marry is a complete bore, or if you could see yourself with them. They had to make snap decisions with very little information. over into an 18th century heroine by paying a visit to the wardrobe department of the Jane Austen Centre. Glenn, is the word frumpy You've seen not just myself, but the delightful young Anne Hathaway becoming 